Okay, so we're we're using the uh, oh, the information built into each signal and our indicators to kind of tell us what's going on with this market trend. As we saw, even though the Dow was up 200 points today, it closed just above where it opened. So it was an indecisive day, a doji type day, right on the T-line with stochastics heading down, or at least leveling out. So what what, what can we make? Uh, is there no audio? No sound. Well, well, well. Um, all right. I guess what I would do is let me... Uh, I'm going to turn off the uh, oh the uh, now how about that? Can everybody hear me now? Except the people that uh, does that sound better? Oh, you don't want to see my mug. That's, that's one of those faces only a mother could love. Okay, so that that good? All right. Maybe. Oh, you can see how the cuckoo clocks are going off right on time. Okay, so we're still in an indecisive nature in this market. That's right, a face for radio is right. This is an indecisive day, once again, this doji, uh, gravestone doji day right smack dab on the uh, T-line, which unfortunately makes the direction of the market going to be based upon how they open this market tomorrow. So if they open it lower, that means we're kind of drifting sideways, not that we're out of the trend, we're just going to be drifting. Now, the more compelling chart is the NASDAQ. As you can see, this is a nice steady uptrend. And I think with today's close, the NASDAQ is positive on the year after the big, uh, uh, on the big nights, uh, on the, on the, after the big sell-off. Are the futures up now? All right. Well, remember, the futures don't mean anything during this time. And the only time the futures mean something is about five minutes before the market opens. Crude oil, you can see how effective the charts are for telling you when there's a bottom on something. There's your bullish Harami Doji. There's your stutter step. There's your morning star signal. There's your uptrend. So there's the first buy signal that didn't get above the T-line. There's your second buy signal that got you above the T-line, started the uh, crude oil uptrend. So we've come from about $19 a barrel. I guess it hit that $8 at one point, but right around $14, $16 a barrel, back up to $23, $24 a barrel. While we're here, we'll take a look at the other things like gold. Yep, I don't know whether that's the current gold. Gold is supported on the 34. Now, a lot of people have been asking why the 34 instead of the 20. Yeah, the 34 seems to work relatively well. Now, it doesn't harm if you want to put the 20 on here. It's still not going to clutter up your charts. Um, yes, so that's what we'll get to here in a minute, Mike. Uh, I've got a lot of charts, so sit back. We're going to try to go through them fast. Um, let me see what some of the other... Soybeans. Eh. Wheat. Not anything there to write home about either. 
Uh, live cattle. You can see the fry pan bottom breakout on live cattle. And lean hogs. You can see what it's been doing uh, today down a little bit. But notice what it's done. Your fry pan bottom came up through the 50, supporting to the 50, supporting right smack dab off the T-line. Get ready for the next wave to the upside. Just things that we can watch. Uh, uh, is the, the moving average simple? The uh, 50 and the 200, let me go back to something that has all of them. The 50 and the 200 are simple moving averages. The 34 and the T line are the exponential, the 8 and the exponential. Uh, Prushat, go up to the very top of your page and make sure you're on screen sharing and not on slides. Adam, you can't get in. How can you not get in? You're in. Can Steve make an announcement to explain where the charts are and to read the red text? I don't know what that means. Why, yes? Your chart says June. Oh, that was on, no, that was the June contract. Uh, that was the June contract we were looking at. Not, um, and this, uh, let's, what else were we looking at over in the commodity, let's say silver. So this is the Ju July contract. Okay. I'm going to try to do this faster because there is a ton of good charts out there. Obviously, it wasn't a lucky guess. Whoops. That we saw the reversal down here because that was your McMuffin. Morning star signal followed by the doji sandwich. Telling us we were starting an uptrend. There was our J-hook pattern. Now here's our trend channel. So what can we assume, even though the market's not heading up with any great strength right now, it's a slow uptrend. So what's that tell us about investor sentiment? It uh, tells us that there's no major change of investor sentiment. Okay. The blue line is the 50-day moving average. The red line is the 200-day simple moving average. The green, green line right here is the 34 e exponential moving average. Now, the reason we have the 50 and the 200 on here is not because we're using the 50 and the 200 to make our decisions. We're using those because that's where every major money manager has, they have those on their charts. That's where they're making their decisions about their portfolios. We can see very clearly what uh, what happens at those moving averages. The 34 works reasonably well as a support and resistance. And then the T-line is your most important one. I could take everything off this chart, the 200, the 50, the 34, and just leave the T-line in the stochastics. Stochastics are 12.33 because this is the important factors. What type of signals are we doing? Or what are what type of signals are performing? So apparently there's some new people in here tonight. 
remember, there's 50 or 60 candlestick signals. We've narrowed them down to 12 because the others don't occur often enough to make it worthwhile. So if you just learn the 12 major signals, it's like learning the ABCs, the building blocks of candlestick analysis. Because the information built into those 12 major signals will give you high probability, high uh, frequency trend reversals, meaning they're going to occur 99.99% .99 of the time as far as your major reversals. Now, if you use that information and you use the, the other uh, parameters, the moving averages, um, especially the T-line, we can make some very strong high probability assessments because human nature works the same way time after time. So I'm starting off with space, SPCE, because you can see what, what was acting as a resistance level, the 50-day moving average. And then yesterday, they broke out through that level. Now we're just watching. We bought uh, some today. If it breaks out through this level, we've got a good, strong move. And why do we think we have a good, strong move? Because they gapped up kind of a little uh, best friend signal through the 50, through the 34, through the T-line, and then confirmed today with stochastics coming up. We recommended TVTY because there is your cup and handle. Now, this is why the T-line is very relevant. Notice what's happened in this fry pan bottom, then the breakout through the 50, and the breakout right here as the kind of this pattern developed. Notice what they couldn't do when they pulled back. They couldn't close it below the T-line. What did that do as far as our uptrend? Told us if they broke through the 50 and they weren't going back, where's your next likely target? AAOI we've owned for a while. Notice the bobble breakout here. Notice the T-line crunch. The T-line crunch is when you see a buy signal on a close above the T-line, if they're crunching it up to the resistance level, and they can't close it back below the T-line, that T-line is telling you the price is still going to crunch right up through the resistance and watch for a new price move. And then notice what happened here. There's your J-hook pattern. So what keeps you in a good trade? The fact that they can't close below the T-line. Uh, is there a cup and then a handle? Not really. Nah. That's just sideways trading and then the breakout through the 50. All right. So here's another element of candlestick analysis that you want to be cognizant of. And that is a bad trade situation. Look at the, this is what we call the classic pattern. Kind of your fry pan bottom. What do we expect coming out of a fry pan bottom? A strong price move. A J-hook pattern. And how did the J-hook pattern start? Look at your left-right combo, right smack dab on the T-line. Left-right combo is a doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. One of your strongest reversal signals. Now, if we know that's a strong reversal signal, then today, we, or last couple days, it did our double doji sandwich, breaking out into new high territory. Good chart. Happier than a pig in duty to be sitting in this one. Except they must have reported something after hours because it's trading down here. A left-right combo is right here. See the little doji type day? Let me make this big so you can see it. So what's a doji day? A day of indecision. And then it's followed by a bullish engulfing. So a doji followed by a bullish engulfing is called a left-right combo. It's one of your major signal reversals. And it's very powerful. I mean, it's uh, when we show the top rank signals and patterns, this is number two, right behind the best friend signal. That doji represents indecision, that, that little left jab, 
the bullish engulfing shows you that which way they're going that roundhouse right that starts the next move to the upside now when they reported earnings it traded all the way down here then it came back up here so the one thing that you don't pay attention to is after hours trading because that's where if this traded I don't know how many let's say it traded uh, 1.8 million shares today it might be 12,000 shares moving it up and down what we want to see is where they open it now if they open it down here that's not good close out the position so one of the hardest features that most or hardest aspects of investing is investors getting out of a bad trade and what I've learned is if they're not doing what the chart pattern tells us they should be doing get out and move on to something else where you're making back some of that money quickly uh, well, they reported something because it was trading down here after hours what was today today was a seventh okay so this is why the T line is very instrumental in making good profits okay it's at 977 all right so it's down near the bottom of that look at our uh, little fry pan bottom breakout with kind of a doji sandwich how long do you hold on to this as long as it doesn't close below the T line now why is that relevant because what is a lot of human nature human nature is oh, I've got a good profit and in my case before candlesticks came along very rarely did I have a profit so what was the normal reaction of most investors when they have a profit boy I better take my profits because if it went back to being a loss I sure would be look stupid I don't want to do that so everybody takes their profits even though the trend may not be over this is the uh, confirming part that once you get into good trade remember what you're supposed to do cut your losses short and let your profits run but most people don't let their profits run this is the uh, the relevancy of the T line and it keeps you in positions that you might come out of just because you have a profit same scenario over here on DKN G look at your kind of your fry pan bottom breakout little slow curve there's your bobble breakout when would we take some profits look how it gapped up here what was the uh, reason for taking profits maybe up in this range look how far away you are from the T line remember our, I guess I didn't say it if you see a buy signal and a close above the T line you can stay long until you see a sell signal and it closed back below the T line with the caveat that the further away you move from the T line the higher the probability it's going to come back and test it so when you start moving too far away from the T line you probably want to start taking some profits because the T line which acts like a normal or acts like a natural support and resistance level of human nature just the caveat says if you move too far away it's going to come back and test it so right now we're we've been long DK and G it did pull back now we have to see how it opens if it opens lower tomorrow you probably want to take profits because it's going to come back and test the T line there's been a, a lot of people ask well, what signals and patterns are the strongest and they're all strong or we wouldn't be looking at them today after 400 years of the Japanese rice traders developing or identifying look at the J hook pattern again this is what we call the classic pattern a fry pan bottom we recommended L V G somewhere back down here stay long there was a sell signal close it out there's your J hook pattern why do we call this a classic because this is what normally happens what's what happens coming out of a fry pan bottom strong price move what's the prerequisite for a J hook pattern a strong price move so it's not unusual to see a fry pan bottom strong price move consolidation J hook pattern 
And what's the expected move of this right here? The same as this right here. And notice, notice what this has done just in the last three days, a good hefty percentage. There are a few that we recommended on that basis. Again, this is because human nature works the same way at time after time. Look at your slow fry pan bottom. Look at the pullback. And then look what happened right here. There's your left-right combo after it bounced right off the 50, closed back up above the T-line, closed back up above the 200. Why would we buy in here? Because if it starts moving up above this level, what do we got? We've got the next wave in progress. So knowing that puts you in situations where the probabilities of being in the right direction is extremely high. Now remember, we're buying the buy signals. Here's your morning star signal in the oversold area. Listen to this terminology. We're buying the signals in the oversold condition. We're buying the pattern breakouts when stochastics are usually in the overbought condition. So look at your little J-hook pattern right here. When it broke out, where do you think the next target was? Up here, what do you see? A sell signal. Took, take profits. What was the next signal? There's your piercing signal, right smack dab on the T-line. So if you took profits in here, look at your uptrend, back up through the two, uh, 200. And what did it do today to get through the 200? Look at your little trend kicker signal. It opened here and closed here. Today it gapped up at the previous day's open and went this direction. So a trend kicker signal is pretty much telling you there's still a lot of strength. And we know there should be a lot of strength. Or if there is a lot of strength, what's happening right here? A bobble breakout. There's wave one. Wave three is going to take you up into this range. What was that? Domo. We recommended PS, wave one. Look at your little bobble breakout right here, up to the next moving average. There's your morning star signal. Broke out, next price move, either this or this. So this isn't rocket science. This is just identifying what the Japanese rice traders have illustrated for us over hundreds of years, showing us what happens in human nature. When pulling back to the T-line, does price have to stay above the, uh, uh, does price have to stay above? No, the 34 doesn't really make any difference. So in this case, not really. It's the T-line. The 34 just happened to be right in that same vicinity. I could take the 34 off, and it's not going to affect anything. It just adds, like, adds, notice where it failed right here right here at the 34, telling you your shooting star might be starting your downtrend. So you just, these are major moving averages. These are what everybody around the world uses on their charts to make decisions. The 34 is what I would call a secondary moving average, really well. And then the T-line is, you could take everything else off your chart and leave the candlestick signals, or the candlestick uh, formations and the T-line, and you could still trade very successfully. I need to uh, need help to set my chart on thinkorswim. Victor, you set your moving averages on the T-line on those charts just like you would the 50 and the 200. The uh, stochastics are slow. And no. We're not buying the stochastics. We're not buying the crosses. All we really want to know is where are we in the trend? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, the 34 is not irrelevant. And in this case, where it pulled back, it basically pulled back to the T line. And we've been making good money on this one. Look at your breakout with a little kicker signal. Look at your J-hook pattern. Look at your trend kicker signal that broke this out, telling us we're still in a strong uptrend. So if you can identify what happens in human nature based upon the signals, 
you can see what's happening right now on MAG, uh, the silver company. You can see how you've got another J-hook pattern. Where do you think this is likely going to go to? Right, well, uh -oh. here's your first target up there. Uh, P.S. Why didn't you sell when it closed below the T line? We didn't. We weren't in it. We probably would have been closing right here because look at your dark cloud. Dark cloud opens above any of the previous days trading and closes more than halfway down that candle. There was your sell signal. And what what else was relevant about uh, that sell signal? It happened right smack dab on the 50. So if you look at this, what's your criteria? You're in the overbought area. You're seeing a sell signal right smack dab on a major moving average. What's your uh, strategy for the next day? If it opens lower, you close it out. Now, you're not in it, but notice the next signal, a morning star signal. What happens on a, what's that? Bleh. Morning star signal is one of your 12 major signals. Where is it occurring? Right smack dab on the uh, T line, telling you get ready for the next wave to the upside. <laughs> yeah, full stochastics or slow stochastics, it's not that big a deal. We're not trading stochastics. We're trading the signals. We just want to see whether we're in the overbought or oversold area. All right, so here's what you should be seeing. I'm not just picking out the good charts and showing you good charts. I'm showing you the charts that work. And they're, they're good charts because they do work consistently. So every time I put on a trade based upon a pattern or a signal, I know the probabilities are in my favor that it's going to move in the, the direction I'm uh, at my expected direction. So Clovis looks like it's trying to do a J-hook pattern. Cryolife. Since down here, we've been long. Now, you might have closed it out right here. Where would be a good place if you're going to buy this back? Would you want to be buying it? Probably above this level, telling us that we have a wave one, wave two, going into wave three. And then what's the trajectory of this one right now? Eh, it's okay. But if it's okay, why sit in something that might be going up or down? when you can take that money and go find another chart that looks like, like this. So essentially, because the scanning technique for finding the best uh, trade setups always gives you a good supply of trades, if you've got one that looks a little bit iffy and you don't know which way it's going, close it. Then you can move to something that has a high probability trade setup. Wampum, which is Wheaton Precious Meadows, uh, Look right here what happened. We had a uh, close below the T-line. However, what didn't it do? That wasn't a sell signal. Remember our rule? We want to see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. Now, had this closed down here the next day, yeah, we had closed it out. But it came right back up again. So that wasn't a sell signal. That was just a down day and an uptrend that happened to close just below the T-line. Uh, does a dark cloud need confirmation? Yes. Do you exit on the next day even if it opens up? No. If it opens positive, I forget which one it was. What were you looking at? That uh, P.S.? Oh, okay. Yeah. So here's a cell signal in the overbought condition, right smack dab on the 200. Now, if it opened the next day right here and traded up, yeah, it didn't confirm the sell signal and negated it. 
The fact that it did open lower and started trading lower told us we're at least probably coming back to the T line. Was it going to support there? Had no idea. We just knew we had a sell signal. It's time to get out. It could have come all the way back here. It could have come all the way back here. But when we started seeing the morning star signal and coming back up, we knew what pattern it was setting up. There was your uh, bobble setup. Which trading platform is best? What do you think? They're all as good or as bad as each other, Sean. So, yeah, yeah there's, and that's not, uh, Sean, that's more of a question for in here because you got so many people um, using different platforms. You could ask them which one they think is the best. I, I use uh, TC or uh, Thinkorswim. Um, for most of my trading is PS is the sell signal a dark cloud yes this is where it opened above any of the previous days trading and closed more than halfway down that candle uh, Ramon or uh, Rolando hold on to your individual ones until we get to where I tell Jim to do the double line, then I'll, and I probably even have Twill. I have Twillow on here, so, uh, yeah, don't worry. 200 is simple. The 50 is simple. The 34 is 34 exponential. The black T line is exponential. And this little green line is the 3 T line. And if the 3T line can't close below the T line, it still tells you you're, you're, you're in an uptrend. Uh, on this day, did they have earnings? Okay. These are daily, yes. Let me find something that is more relevant. Here is crude oil. Ah, uh, it's not going to be great. This is what the uh, this is what the daily chart looks like. Now, if I was trading crude oil today, I just flip to my 10-minute chart, and this is what the 10-minute chart looks like. Exactly the same. Remember, candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. So it doesn't matter whether you're trading off the 10-minute chart or the 15-minute chart. The 30 minute chart, they all look exactly the same. Uh, no, the 3T is a 3 exponential. Yeah, so there's, there's what, this is the 30 minute, and then this is the daily. So if I'm trading soybeans during the day, I'm usually flipping to my 10 minute chart to see what they're doing. Oh, we're not even through half of these yet. We did wampum. Uh, Yeti. Notice what happened to Yeti today. It gapped up and came back. That's not a good sign. That tells me that if I was long and they open this lower, I'm closing it out because that means the, uh, the buyers have disappeared. And they did it right there at the 200-day moving average. Sava. Oh, that is still doing the 45 degree. The 45 degree is that strong signal, kind of a best friend signal. How long do you stay long on this one? Very simple. As long as this stays above the T line, you stay long. Abby, hang on to your individual ones until I tell Jim to do the double line. Now, we went short. We were buying puts on Hasbro yesterday, but today it popped up, but it didn't do a reversal signal, and it failed right here at the 50. Now, if this opens positive tomorrow, we'll close out the short position. If it opens lower, that means this, it's still staying below the T line. And now we would, uh, this one still has a potential of this kind of 
bottoming action. This is the home builders, uh, uh, the builders or uh, Home Depot, uh, Toll Brothers, all of those type of things. But the reason this one's attractive is it's a triple leveraged and it can move a big percentage each day. I thought the T-line, the T-line is the eight exponential moving average. The three T-line is this little green line right here. The T-line is the black line. The T-line works more effectively when it moves too far away from the T-line. The three T-line uh, uh, kicks in, and that's a whole different, uh, whole different uh, training session. Uh, okay, so you've got some like this. There's your fry pan bottom. There's your breakout. What happens when they break through a resistance level? They'll come back and test it. When do you want to be buying this one? If it opens positive, where do you think your next target could be? All the way up here. So this is setting up. There's your fry pan bottom. There's your breakout. There's your pullback. Notice how you pulled back to the 50 and the T-line and the 34. If this opens positive, you can be buying immediately with the anticipation that uptrend is going to remain in progress. On Yeti, yes. Remember, we're not buying the T-line. We know that if they were selling off here as soon as they hit the uh, 200 and they open it lower, they're still selling probably back to the T-line. Now, even if they don't close below the T-line, they sell back to it, What's it telling you about your chart pattern? Ah, it's starting to look pretty dismal. I'd be someplace else. Oh, uh, Mark, we were planning to, but something got goofed up on the schedule. So um, we just did the, uh, uh, the, the full day training. We will do options again. Uh, we Because of a... Uh, Oh, a scheduling goof up. We will do the options. Uh, uh, yeah, I, we'll we'll do the option strategies again. Um, oh yeah, and the futures we're going to be doing on Tuesday night. So I hope uh, we weren't trying to bait and switch. We had a couple things that got goofed up as far as our scheduling. Okay, so um, uh, let me give you some more here. So these are the type that you like to get stuck in. There's your 45 degree. Look at your big move, consolidation. They couldn't close it below the T-line. And look what it's done. No matter what the market has done, a day that you could have gotten out and even if you did you would have bought it back when it did a kicker type signal back to the upside so I mean anytime I see this if we see a candlestick sell signal or close below the t-line makes it very simple uh, DJ I will try to get that scheduled in uh, before everybody's allowed out of the house again so maybe next Next week, we'll, we'll get it uh, in. Uh, let's see. Not too clear on your usage of stochastics because I see you are buying one, two combo. Uh, yes, remember. <coughs> Which one was it? The left-right combo was setting up a pattern, the J-hook pattern. So remember, we're buying the signals down here, but if there's something setting up a J-hook pattern, it's probably usually going to occur. And now remember what the most important aspect of candlestick analysis is. The signals itself. Everything else is just a confirming indicator. So I'll try to find another one where the uh, pattern is setting up. But you use the pattern first. The patterns are usually going to be more effective when they're in the overbought area. And then you're buying the signals. Whoops, can't see it on this chart. 
Oh, yes, I can. Oh, what is this thing? I don't know. Never seen this before. But we're trying to buy the signals in the oversold area. We're looking for patterns uh, in the overbought area. Is that, did I say that right, Pat? Okay, the biggies. Now, this isn't one of the biggies, but you can see what happened on Uber. Came up, almost hit the 200, failed, did a best friend signal yesterday or today, and I think it was still trading up a little bit after hours. You can buy this one if it comes up through the 200 because there's your breakout, kind of your bubble breakout. The other ones. Amazon right now is nothing to write home about. You can be buying it. You're still in this sideways range. Apple is better because you can see how this is. Now, this is what I was uh, illustrating today in the, uh, oh, the big speaker uh, session that's been going on for three days. Here's the relevancy of the key line. The major moving averages act like targets. That's because everybody has those on their charts, and everybody's waiting to see what happens at those levels. Look at the T-line. Opens, closes, basically touches. The fact that they use the T-line as a support level is much more indicative that it's a natural support and resistance level because nobody has this on their charts. Or statistically, nobody has this on their charts. We've just discovered it based upon if candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of investor sentiment, and the T-line acts like a natural support and resistance level of human nature, kind of a Fibonacci characteristic, when you combine those two, you've got a very powerful combination that keeps your emotions out of your trading. And I say that with emphasis because before candlesticks came along, I was the worst investor in the world. I did everything that a normal investor would do. Bought at the top, sold at the bottom. And it made it very easy for me to turn around 180 degrees because all I had to do was the opposite I'd normally do when I saw buy signals in the oversold area. NVIDIA. You're right here at this breakout level. Actually, there's your left-right combo. Now, look where your left-right combo occurred, right here at the T-line area. What was that kind of implying? That if there was more upside, we'd have a J-hook. And look where your stochastics are. They're not anywhere near the oversold area. It's basically telling us that this move is still heading positive. This was kind of a J-hook pattern right in here. Same scenario. They get, came down through the 50, the T-line, and the 34. Then the next day, they did a bullish harami doji up near the top end of the range, and look where they did it. Right back to the 50 and the T-line. When it opened positive, what was it telling us? They were starting to curl this back up. We had a wave one, a wave two, starting wave three. This is why down in here, we put on a, now, if you're an option trader, this is one of the things we talk about in the options room, that the options for Apple are huge, I mean way more than what you wanted to pay for something. But putting on the 10, buying the uh, May 15, 10, three, well, buying the May 15, 300s, and selling the three tens was like $3 or so, which meant if this goes up, to the 310 level by expiration, which is next Friday, the $3 has gone to $10, still a good rate of return. Could that be an evening star? It could be, but we don't have anything yet telling us there. Remember what an evening star's signal looks like. It's a big up day, so all you've got right now is just doji days. Uh. Netflix, there's kind of your piercing signal, bouncing right off the 34, then closing, there's your doji sandwich, 
what was the trajectory looking like? Looking like a J-hook pattern. Start your next uptrend. Tesla, just sideways. Now, if you bought Tesla here based upon kind of this bullish engulfing signal, you stay long, but this is where the visual of candlesticks make it very simple. Where would you, if you were long, where would you want to be out of this trade if it came back down through the T-line? So you just put your safety stop right here because logic says if it comes down here, it's not going anywhere. You want to have your money someplace else. And CrowdStrike. Put that into the biggie category because everybody's watching it. Same scenario. There's your piercing signal. There's your J-hook pattern setting back up. What's this potential of this? Probably this move right here. And it broke out today with a best friend signal. Your best friend signal is your best friend. Um, your doji gap up through the resistance level tells us there's probably more upside. Uh, the option room, Rob, is open all day long just like the regular room. So if, if, if you're a member to the website, you're, you're going to be in the, uh, the main room. That's where we constantly go through which charts act are acting well. You've got a bunch of traders in there that have been experienced at finding good candlestick patterns and signals. So you've got to, always got a constant supply of good trades. But it's also effective for if you're learning candlesticks, you expedite your learning process by saying, well, what's that signal? What's it mean? You got somebody explaining it to you right away. The options room is much smaller. There's only about oh, 35, 40 traders in there. But because the terminology is so much different, and what we do is, if we see this pattern, now we can say, all right, maybe we want to be buying an 85 or an 80, 85 spread. That would be much more effective than buying the 75 calls or even the 80 calls. No, but no, it doesn't have to be in an oversold area. Because what is, what's it forming? It's forming a J-hook pattern. So this is where we call 2 plus 2 is the fact that uh, you have a best friend signal confirming a J-hook pattern. What do we expect from a best friend signal? More upside. What do we expect from a J-hook pattern breakout? More upside. Oh, Jim, did you change color? Oh, Richard, I'm just picking out something that maybe buying the 75s, you're, you're paying uh, oh, $7.40. I'm just picking out numbers. But maybe if you're buying an 80, selling an 85, you're paying a dollar 90 for that dollar 90. That if it goes up here, uh, your dollar 90 goes to five bucks. I was just picking out. So we look at the math, and that's what we did on the options trading. Is you always look at the math. What makes the most sense? Most people think that if you see a stock going up, you buy the calls. You probably do that about 20% of the time. You're probably going to be much better. Uh, 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 much be, much better off doing a spread or even a debit spread or even a credit spread. But that's a whole different topic. But those are the type of things that we discuss in the uh, options room. So I usually try to come in once or twice a day in the options room. You've got good traders in there that are putting out ideas. But the same thing in the regular room. You've got people constantly putting out ideas plus it's given you multiple sets of eyes looking for good trade setups. So ALSN, you can see how this is setting up. That if this opens positive tomorrow, where do you think your next target is? Probably the top of the channel. Why? Because it's doing it right off the T-line. What the URL for the room it good to have experience looking over your shoulder. 
I, I don't understand. Okay, yes, there's, uh, yeah, Jim just put in a link that if you need information about the options room, uh, Abraham will give you, get you. Oh, okay, and there was a special, thank you, Becky. Okay, look at your uh, J-hook pattern. There's your classic, fry pan bottom. There's your kind of your bobble breakout. So anytime you look at a chart, the more you become accustomed to seeing what patterns are setting up, you're going to get experience by looking back and saying, ah, what started this move? There's a fry pan bottom. It broke out with a T-line crunch. Next strong price move. There's our pullback. Where did it pull back to? Right smack dab to the T-line. Where did it break out? Right now you want to stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. GMNK. There's your fry pan bottom breakout. How long did you stay in this one? Until you saw a sell signal and it closed below the T-line. Now it's popped back up. Kind of a kicker signal, not quite a kicker signal. But what's that telling us? Fry pan bottom, J-hook pattern, look for the next move to the upside. Now, will all of these move up exactly like they look? Definitely not, but the probabilities are pretty strong that that pattern is going to continue as expected. Now, it might be that four out of five of those work, which means the ones that don't work, you close out quickly because they're going to you're going to identify very quickly whether they confirmed or not. There's your kind of your fry pan bottom breakout. There's your 45 degree. You stay long on on T2 for as long as you don't see a sell signal and a close below the T line. This is a perfect example of everybody was watching this or commenting on this in their chat room. Anytime you see that big price move. How do you trade that? Do you buy it here? Do you buy it here? Simple. You move to your 10-minute chart. Whoops, that's a 30-minute. You move to your 10-minute chart. And notice what your 10-minute chart didn't do. Never closed below the T-line. Now you started seeing the sell signals. Maybe you closed it out here. But if you were getting in here somewhere, getting out here, this is exactly how you can day trade very accurately, whether you're trading stocks, commodities, currencies, bonds, tulip bulbs, anything that has fear and greed in it. Uh, AJ on Apple, I bought those spreads a while ago meaning probably over a week ago, probably somewhere down in this range with the expectation that it was going to come up to the uh, 310 uh, area. What do you do when earnings reports are pending a few days off? Do you usually pull out if the uh, pattern at, the predict at all predictive of what? Yes. Remember, Jake, if you go back to the very definition of candlestick signals, which they're the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame, which means if they know the earnings are coming up and you're going into that afternoon, like yesterday, they were closing near the top end of the range, that was a pretty good indication that somebody that has a lot more insights or knowledge of what's going on with that company is still buying going into the close, that that's usually going to work out fairly well. Same thing with C-Day. They were still buying going into the uh, close. That's usually a good indication that somebody knows somebody or something about the earnings. Would you use the three-day for a stop when the Stocks get way away from the T line. Uh, no. You use, oh, the three EMA, you can.
you can do strangles and straddles. That's that was going to be part of our uh, 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 or part of our training on the uh, options, and those those you can use on earnings. So we, but you use the three T. But more importantly, you now this is a very good illustration. Look at what was happening here. Remember what was happening in Tesla? It was moving up, moving up, moving up. And what, what do the Japanese rice traders tell us? Where do most people buy? They start buying exuberantly at the top. How can you tell the exuberance is coming in? They start gapping it up, start gapping it up, start gapping it up and move big. Then they gap it up way up here. And I doubt if I can find that day. But on that day, what was the alert that we should be ready to take profits? Look how far away you are from the T-line. What's that tell you? All the exuberant buying has come in. So on that day, when it's trading way up here, very simple. You click to your 10-minute chart. And the 10-minute chart was looking like this, looking like this, looking like this. And then the 10-minute chart saw sell signals. So a couple guys in the options room were closing out their options right up in here because that's where the 10-minute chart said there was some selling. Because what's our basic rule about the T-line? The further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability it's going to come back and test it. So that's a perfect example that everybody can recognize uh, where that, that happens. Kind of the same situation here not too long ago. When they gap it up, get ready to take some profits. Uh, hold on, let me get through these. We got a ton. What did I just do? I forgot what I just did. Uh, K Z R. You can see the steady uptrend. Then there's your morning star signal. You can stay long on something like this with identifying this. If you've closed out, yep, next day a morning star signal, you get ready to buy right back in again. There's nothing wrong with closing out a position when it looks like it's time to close out and getting back in when it's time to get back in. This is what we call a scoop pattern. Look how flat this handle is. Pulls back, and then this is kind of your bullish flutter kicker signal. Bullish flutter kicker is where they open it here, close here. The next day, they open it right about the same level they opened it the previous day and do a doji. Now, here's where you put 2 plus 2 together. What's our doji rule? It's going to move in the direction of how they open after a doji, which means it's probably trading positive. So this becomes a bullish flutter kicker signal because if you took out this little flutter, you have a kicker signal. Oh, uh, let's see. Do you think Tesla is some sort of head and shoulders? I don't do. Not really. Nah, and I wouldn't care. I'm looking to see what's happening right here. So, again, if I was long Tesla and it's trading above the T line, get a doji, what's our doji rule? It better open positive and trade positive, because if it opens lower, it's probably trading lower. You want to close out the position. Again, the doji rule will save you quite often because of that simple parameter that it will move in the direction of how they open after a doji. Uh, no, the uh, WOE is the, the uh, normal service, the option service. Look at your slow curve. Look at your bullish engulfing. Slow curve usually has these big breakouts. Twillo. Look at your slow curve. Big breakout. The slow curve is one of the patterns that you want to uh, be able to identify when it's occurring because this is usually the result. It's a very strong price move. 
I make a lot of profits trading options on the slow curve setup. So here's APTO. There's your J-hook pattern. Look at your doji sitting right on the 50. What's your next price move? Wave one, wave three is going to take you up much higher. Slow curve, fry pan bottom, breakout on Peloton. And kind of a slow curve breakout on PayPal. Yeah, there's no uh, no percentages in the uh, 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 waves. We're just looking for wave one, wave two, wave three. Okay, and the J-hook patterns are working very effectively. GMNK, uh, Dropbox. There's your J-hook pattern. There's your fry pan bottom. Classic J-hook pattern. Look at the best friend gap up. That tells you there's more upside. And Jet or, uh, Blue, there's your setup. There's your fry pan bottom. There's your classic coming off the uh, 50. Where do you think your next target is likely to be? All the way up here to the 200-day uh, moving average. GNMK was the one we'd already looked at before. Was PayPal, did PayPal report? Oh, yeah, so notice that they were still trading up going into the earnings if they reported uh, today. And there's your classic setup, Morningstar signal, smack dab off the uh, the 50, bounced off the 34, closed above the T-line. Where do you think your next target is? Up here. Now, for an option trader, you might say, all right, maybe I'll buy the 25s and sell the 28s because that's my likely target. That spread may be, uh, okay, after the close, thank you, Jake. That spread is probably much more lucrative than just buying calls outright. So here's your bobble breakout on GTN. If it opens positive, what do you got going? Well, notice how you did a little best friend type gap up through the uh, 50. If it opens positive, you've got a bobble breakout. And look where it's breaking out, right here. So you've had a sideways move for months, and now they've got a strong signal breaking out. Where do you think the next target will be? Um, what's Jake? Uh, oops, I didn't read everything. Did I miss on these slow curves? with already large gaps. Are they tradable at this point? Uh, you have to look at them now on the basis of what type of pattern could come off of here. Maybe a 45 degree. But why was this going up? Because people were anticipating what, the, uh, what was happening on the earnings or what they expected on the earnings. A bobble is a J-hook pattern much more defined. You can pretty much see where the resistance level is and when they come back up through the resistance that uh, so as we saw in domo did a indecisive trading day a doji doji rule if it opens lower you close out the position especially if you're in the overbought area now they have a buy signal at the t line comes right back up if this starts trading positive you've got a bobble breakout and a bobble is just a more defined J-hook. You could take out the 200, and you basically have a J-hook pattern. It's just so we can see it much more clearly. That's why we give it a more distinctive, educated name like bobble. ePay. Failed at the uh, 200, pulled back. Now coming back up through, there's your bobble breakout. You also can look at patterns that everybody else is watching. You can see kind of a wedge pattern here and also 
a J-hook pattern. Morning star signal followed by a doji sandwich. That's called your McMuffin. There's your morning star signal. That's in itself a strong reversal signal. There's your doji sandwich. What do we expect coming from a doji sandwich? More upside. So basically you have a morning sandwich or your McMuffin, which is a very strong uptrend. A 45 degree uh, is once you see that big price move, then it kind of moves in a steady 45 degree um, Uh, doesn't look like it's broken out yet though. Where would you see the breakout? Right here where you can see where there's kind of a uh, resistance level of the recent tops. Plus right now you've got that morning or that uh, kind of bobble breakout strong buy signal. If it breaks out through this level that tells you you got a lot of running room. Yes, the morning star signal is still relevant because of where it's occurring. I forget which one it was. It was occurring right off the uh, uh, which one were we looking at? I can't even remember. Edwin, hang on to your individual ones until I tell Jim to do the double line. And then just try to do one. Uh, Richard, uh, the patterns are all over our website. Was it Winnebago? Yeah, that's a, that's a morning star signal right off the T-line telling us that we're starting the next wave up. So just because it didn't occur down here in the oversold area, it still told you you had a bullish signal off the uh, T-line that you were starting your next pattern, which would be that J-hook pattern. So if you see a signal, they work most effectively in the oversold area or a sell signal in the overbought area. But if you see a signal and it's setting up a pattern, that becomes very relevant also. And Zillow. Another J-hook type pattern coming out of a wedge type formation. Lots of running room to the upside. Man, I got a bunch here. Work. Same scenario here. Look where your breakout level is. Right about there. With a slow curve. If this breaks out, You've got a wedge formation breaking out. That's probably got some strong running room to it also. And the most strongest of candlestick signals is the kicker signal. It opens here, closes here. The next day they gap it up at or above the previous day's open and go the opposite direction. That basically tells you they've kicked the investor sentiment in the opposite direction. You want to be buying that strongest individual candlestick uh, uh, signal. Oh, uh, yeah, I think there, Jim, darn, darn, um, Jim just put the link in. You've got a lot of technical uh, products on the uh, the store. You've got the the flashcards. The flashcards for the signals. You've got the flashcards for all the patterns. You've got high tech. Oh, I don't even have the uh, camera on. You've got the mouse pad that has the 12 major signals on it. And then you've got a poster. A two foot by three foot glossy poster of the uh, 12 major signals that every American family should have hanging up in their living room. Oh man, it's already quarter after nine. 
There's a bearish kicker signal on Grubhub. That's going to be a strong downside move. Let's see, we did Zillow, right? Why do I have that as a kicker? I don't know. SPWR. SPWR, I think, was gapping up at this level. If it starts going this way, you've got a kicker signal breaking out of a uh, J-hook pattern. That's right, a patriotic duty. Um, What am I looking at here? P R M W. Uh, I don't know what happened there, but that's something's missing. For some reason missing the. Uh, that's a uh, kicker signal. Now, what was this one? There's one that you can go short. H I I. Look at the dumpling top. Dumpling tops the opposite of a fry pan bottom. Look for uh, more downside. And I think there was a couple others. Oh, this is from a couple of days ago or yesterday. Yeah, we were worried about shorting the uh, cruise lines because there's a support level here. But Goldman, yep, yeah, that one came back up. That's right. Yeah, and she gets a doji sandwich, stick sandwich. Okay, any uh, any general questions on candlesticks? Except I'm getting the the ones. Uh, yeah, Pat, you might have to. Maybe copy and paste it into a server and then do it. Uh, still getting some questions on private message for, about the training. The two-day training is going to take you from A to Z. It's going to allow you to recognize the or identify the signals and the uh, confirming indicators that enhance those signals the patterns, and then the combinations that create what we call the top rank signals and patterns. The common sense aspects of where to set your stops, common sense aspect of analyzing what the overall market trend is so you know which way to be scanning for either longs or shorts the next day, uh, entry strategies, what you need to confirm a book, good bullish trade, and exit strategies. What is telling you is time to start coming out of a position uh, when the probability is starting to go against you. And then we finish up by doing simple scanning, showing what we look for, taking all that information, and kind of ac accumulating that as far as the best, best trade setups. Yes, it will be recorded so that if you can't sit through the whole thing, or if you do sit through the whole thing, and want to go back and review it, it's always there. When you have a big gap that is based upon earnings, do you expect that to be a 45 degree if you bought something like uh, ePay or Twillow? You don't expect it, but you can identify what you should see the next day. If it opens down here, not good. If it opens here, maybe you're going to see that 45 degree from off of there. So that's where you start learning how to identify that if it opens here and starts trading down, that's profit taking. If it opens here and kind of waffles around, now you're more likely to have that 45 degree continuation. I would like to learn more on stock and ETF futures. Please do the Tuesday session. Okay, uh, yep, we will do that. You have a separate class just for new beginner who does not know much. Bobby, you'll be surprised how a large percentage of the investment population still doesn't know candlesticks. 
So the two-day training, we start from the very basics because there's not a whole lot of people that uh, uh, know candlesticks and even the experienced ones will come back. Once you take this course, if you've taken it in the past, you get to come back and do it for free. And we get a high percentage of people coming back to do it because there are so many simple, high profit nuances in candlestick analysis that the best way to learn how to use them is to see them over and over. So that is your best uh, uh, method for learning. Also, I've written three books on candlestick analysis. You can order the books off our site a lot cheaper than you can Amazon. Um, but if you read high profit candlestick patterns, you'll get the meat and the comment or the uh, uh, the information on the on the most likely good trade setups. Uh, is it for members only, John? What is that? Yeah, I think Tuesday might be open to everybody, but I don't know. I'm, I can't figure out how to enter 1233 stochastic set up. There's no place. Uh, Peter, try it with just one three. And that's where the chat room is very effective during the day, that people know how to do it. I don't remember how to do it because I did it so long ago. Second part of buying earnings breakout question. Where would you put a stop, say, on Twillo if you buy on the break over today's close, even halfway down? Uh, no, I would probably put my stop right here because logic says if they have enough strength to bring it back in this through that level, you want to close out. Now, is that a big percentage? Yes, but what are the probabilities of that? Probably not very much. You're probably going to still, still see some um, more upside. Uh, John, are you gone? Huh. No, I'm here. Um, how often are you going to be class like this? Andrew, we do this every Thursday night for everybody. We do the same thing Monday nights for members. Also, we have the chat room open all day long for the members. And then about once a week, for the members, we would do a special session like scanning for the best trade setups or uh, stop losses. We'll do a topic. Now, all that information you can buy on the website, and as a member, you get a, obviously a, a good discount. Or you watch the live charts and uh, or live sessions. So we've got constant learning uh, processes going on. Plus. Each night, I put out two or three stock picks, not so that people have stock picks. I do it in a two-minute video format, analyzing what the market is doing and which direction we want to be in and why we're buying XYZ. Or last night, we were saying when the chart looked like this, that if this opens positive, you got a bobble breakout. And so you you get the description of what a bobble breakout is and you get a description of where to buy it and where to close it out if it if it goes the wrong way. Um, uh, Niaz, yeah, usually on an average of once a week. And I shouldn't say on the average. If we're in a market that warrants having two recommendations today and one tomorrow and one the next day, you know, you'll get that many. If you're in a market like we are right now where it doesn't really know which way it's one to go, you might not get one for the week. So we're not trying to put out a number of stock recommendations in the options room. We're trying to put out recommendations uh, correlating to whether it's a good time to be buying calls or puts 
uh, during that week. Right now, it's pretty tough, but there are good chart setups that have been working. We have the Apple spread on. Uh, I think there's some people that still have the CrowdStrike trade on. And we've been in and out of blue, and we'll probably be coming back into blue uh, very soon. Could you please send the links to buy the scanners? Uh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Yep, he sent that. Courses are yours forever. Yes. Once you have them, once you download them on your computer, they're yours. Can you please buy above price and close price for newbie like me? Uh, we do that, Victor. Usually you'll, you'll see that when you go to the stock picks area, it will... Uh, oh, Jim, can you help John Bush? Tell him to hit the red X and come back in. I'll usually say buy, uh, uh, today we're going to buy blue if it trades above, what did it close, 59.35. Might say if it comes up through 59.60, you want to be buying, and you don't want to see it close back below the halfway point of this candle. So you'll get a reason why we're buying, where we're buying, and where to stop back out of that trade. Okay. Blue is a double doji sandwich. Yes. Or double doji setup. Bullish engulfing. Indecisive, indecisive, and then decisive. That's usually starting your next wave up. Uh, this is on CQG. I don't use CQG to trade stocks during the day because I pay already $1,300 a month for this service. But it's good for these type of sessions where you can move real quickly and they've got clean charts. So during the day, it's delayed by 15 minutes, which doesn't mean anything tonight because everything's already closed. So if I was trading, I'd use this. I'd use this service to trade futures like uh, oh, the uh, currencies, the uh, metals, soybeans, that type of thing but I don't use it for trading stocks. I've got other chart services that I have live. Okay, I guess with that, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. Oh, Jim, Jim, Jim. Now do 2.8 seconds, do the next double line. Okay. Yep, see, now I've got to scroll up. All right, I'll go through these fast. AUPH, you can stay long on this one. You definitely want to uh, have your safety stop here, but it looks like you're in a nice steady uptrend. AXTI, there's kind of your J-hook pattern. You can buy this one on positive trading tomorrow. And uh, NSPS and SNPS, snaps. Kind of breaking out through this level. Stay long on this one. Use the T-line as your stop. Iron Mountain. Kicker type signal. You can buy this one on positive trading. You want to make sure it eventually gets up through the 50-day moving average. PRMW is that kicker. For some reason, I've lost some of the uh, stuff of the kicker signal that should be sending you back up. And that one, that chart's not complete. There's another one that you can buy if it opens positive tomorrow after gapping up through kind of a bobble breakout. And MFGP, whoops, need to make it bigger. Another one you can buy on positive trading. Another bobble breakout, J-hook 
pattern setup. G3, nothing. I wouldn't be long or short this one. It's just not going anywhere. Uh, the spy, not really. It's just sideways right now. Codex, you can get ready to buy this one. You can see the kicker type signal. It still needs to break out through this area. So if you're buying, just watch to see what it does once it gets there. Goose has kind of been lethargic. Right now, now it came back up. If you've stayed long, it has to open positive tomorrow to stay, stay in it. It kind of lost its oomph. And HOLX, that's a good looking chart. You stay long. At this point, you aggressively, you can put a safety stop right there. Conservatively, you put a safety stop just below the T line. So that looks good, and that's kind of what you were seeing in this chart. D K N G. Uh, United Rentals has if eh, yeah, nothing yet. It has to open positive and trade positive and start back up. That's where you have the prospects of going into a a, a bobble breakout. But right now, if yeah. Ugh, I probably wouldn't be long or short. And advanced micro, if you're short, you stay short. You put a safety stop at today's open. Other than that, I wouldn't be long or short on this one. Just not a, doesn't have any real dynamic trend to it. BTIQ, that's your kind of your kicker gap up, uh, J hook pattern. You stay long on this. Square, did they have their earnings? You can see the double doji uh, uh, sandwich. You can see the breakout. You, if, if it's trading positive tomorrow, you stay long. Okay, TA, there's your left-right combo, J-hook pattern. Wave one, wave three should take you up higher. And PRBV, another one that if it opens positive, there's your morning star signal. There, a positive open would give you that double doji uh, sandwich, which would break you out through here. Means you still got more upside. APT has just had a hard time getting moving. I wouldn't be long or short this one. Um, L brands wouldn't be long or short. You can see you're stuck in a sideways wedge. And the 20-year notes uh, bounced off the 50. You can be buying this if it uh, gets back up through the 50-day or up through the T-line. And applied materials, eh, nothing real dynamic there. I'd be someplace else. And Palo, that's a nice little slow curve. You can still be buying this one, breaking out through the uh, 200, again, wave one, wave two, there's your little slow curve, wave three. Uh, this is the dollar. Still stuck in a sideways wedge. Let me see. Oops. Yep, there's your dollar. Ah. Nothing real fantastic there, just kind of stuck sideways. TNA. Uh, nothing. I'd be someplace else. Matador. 
if you're long, stay long. You're kind of still in the 45 degree as long as you stay above the T-line. Hasbro, to stay short, it has to open and trade lower, telling us the 50 is still acting as a resistance. If it opens and trades positive, it's not a very strong downtrend anymore. I'd cover any short position. Barracks Gold, stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. You had a doji today, so it has to open positive and trade positive. See that? Ah, that's a toughie. A lot of whipsaw. So if you're long, it has to open positive tomorrow after today's uh, doji. Light, probably wouldn't be long or short this one. There's absolutely no direction. Boeing, probably still in a downtrend. But notice the uh, magnitude of move. It's a slow drift. If you're short, you stay short. Wouldn't be going long on this one right now. And Microsoft did well even with everybody sitting home. Looks like wave one, wave two, three. And PBYI, nothing. Just nothing on that chart that would make you want to be long or short. American, you're running into a little bit of support right here. So if you were short, it did a little bullish harami today. If it opens positive, you cover your short. I wouldn't be going long. I'd just be covering the short. And space, you're anticipating after the breakout but this one's going to continue higher. Clovis, same scenario. It needs to open positive to continue your uh, J-hook pattern. CBAC, if you're short, stay short. Not a real dynamic short either. The Qs, stay long. Look for it to break out through the 200. But you can see the slow, steady uptrend staying above the T-line. The Sox setting up for a little J-hook type pattern. I'd be buying this one on strength. Holex we did. You stay long, but have your safety stop. Anytime you're up in the overbought area, have a safety stop someplace where it shouldn't be coming back through. And that's one of the one of the things we do in our member sessions on a Wednesday night is show where the logical spots are for for coming out of a or stopping out of a position. LSI, another one that if you're short, you stay short, but it has to open lower to stay short. If it opens positive, now you've got a bullish flutter kicker uh, setting up, which is a strong bullish reversal. Uh, PEIX, big fry pan bottom, you can stay long on this one, especially if they break out through this level. Amazon, we did. You can buy this one, it's just not one of the best charts right now. It needs some more strength one way or the other. X-ray, eh. Not anything to get excited about if, eh, boy, yeah, it needs, needs a strong signal one way or the other. This one's about ready to break out through the 200. That's when you can be buying it. And SUPN, look how it's having trouble right here at the 50. There's your shooting star. So if this opens lower tomorrow and you're long, close it out. It's coming back to test the T-line. And this one, eh, that's not real exciting either. Nothing there to get excited about. You're still kind of in a big wedge formation. Oh, it's not anything great. You're still sideways. I probably wouldn't pay attention to this one. If you like it and you're buying it, 
it needs to get up through the 200. I think there's probably better places to have your money. AAOI, when you stayed long, there's your J-hook pattern. Notice how it broke out with a gap up into the resistance level. You just stay long on this one. Wayfair, there's your 45 degree in progress. Etsy, did they report? Etsy, you stay long. Again, a J-hook pattern in progress. T-Doc, eh. More than likely now you're coming back up to the top of the channel. So you can stay long on this one or you can be buying it. Just don't let it close back below the uh, T-line. Pulte, another one that if it starts trading positive, there's your J-hook bobble breakout. Next target would be up here which would be indicative of nail trying to come come back up uh, toward the uh, 50. Which signal is most potent? The kicker signal as an individual candlestick signal. There's your fry pan bottom in progress on SDC. Stay with it. I think we did OK. TA, didn't we? Yeah, there's wave three after your left-right combo. Wells Fargo, stay short, if anything. You can see how it broke this uh, support level. Stay short until you see a buy signal. Right now, if I was short, I'd have a safety stop just above today's high. We did AMD. Nothing there. I'd be someplace else. Shopify broke out nicely. There's wave three. Wave one, wave two. Notice where wave three started. Right smack dab off the uh, the T line. AUPH, all you can do is stay long as long as it stays up above the T line right now. Uh, CLDR, eh, just sideways. Stamp, nice fry pan bottom. Kind of broke out right here with a J hook pattern. You stay long. And right now, I'd have a safety stop right here after the gap up today, just to make sure it's still heading higher. Labu, kind of lollygag today, right here. So if this J-hook pattern is working, you definitely want to see this open positive tomorrow. Mattel, nothing. Wouldn't be long or short. There's absolutely nothing on that chart that would get tell you which way it's moving. And CBL, if you're short, look how you had kind of a dark cloud right here at the 50. Look what your previous trend was doing. So they popped it up, failed at the 50, which meant they're still in a downtrend. Not a very expensive one, is it? And NSC, eh, not very exciting. It has to open positive tomorrow if you're long to stay in this one. Again, looking for the bobble. Schlumberger, nothing yet, still sideways. Halliburton needs to see a little bit more energy, and Apache also needs to see some energy to the upside. Beyond Meat was the bobble breakout. I would suspect a 45 degree off of here at least. Uh, high profit candlestick patterns, Bill. XLF, nothing there, just sideways. HMI, nothing there either. That's just a that's an ugly chart. Greg said didn't. That's, if there's nothing there, that would make me want to be in this one. 
And Medtronic's, uh, that one's still having a hard time getting out of its own way. If you're long, you stay long, you just have to make sure it breaks through this level. Zoom was acting better. It's back up above the T-line. You can see the trend. That makes up here somewhere your next likely target. Caterpillar. Stay short. Anytime you see something like this, where it's moving up, and then they gap it down and close below the previous day's open, close it out. That's not a good bullish sign. And snap, that's the 45 degree. Big move up, consolidation. Now it's going to be just kind of a steady uptrend until you see a sell signal. Uh, thank you, Joe. Usually on those short stints, I don't get enough time to put all the information I'd like to in, and I fell short doing that today. Uh, Rob, this is not rocket science. This is just graphic depiction of human nature that the Japanese race traders have illustrated for 400 years. Stamp, use, uh, use that as your stop. I was the worst investor in the world until somebody introduced candlesticks to me by accident. That one's not coming up. Is it XLM? No, that's not coming up. And as I started looking at it, I said, this makes sense. And the more I looked at it, the more sense it made. CREX, you can buy this one on positive trading. Just don't let it close back below the T-line. And watch now. You're in an uptrend, in an uptrend. You're at a breakout level. So, but you're in an overbought condition, and you're starting to move away from the T-line. If you're long, you put your safety stop right here. It shouldn't come back down to that level. GBTC. Did I do that right? GBTC. That's just not working. XLK. Stay long as long as it stays in this uptrending channel. IAC, oh, there's your dark cloud. So what happens when they break out through a resistance level? They'll come back and test it for support. So if this opened lower tomorrow, they're bringing it back down here somewhere. Marathon oil. Another one, like all the oils, are kind of congesting in here. So if they stay above the T-line, you stay with it. If it closes below the T-line, they're coming back to test the breakout area of the 50. And crude oil for June is still trading up here at $24 a barrel. You can see how it bottomed over here. Your bullish harami, then your morning star signal. Now you watch to see if it can get through this downtrending channel. All right. No, I'm pretty much guaranteeing that I was the worst investor in the world. There's your kind of your belt hold bullish and golfing J hook pattern. Uh, the golds are still acting strong. T-Doc, you stay long if it stays in this channel, which means it has to stay above the T-line. Now, this is gold as in uh, barracks gold. And this is gold as in, oops, 
Oh, hit too many buttons. This is gold kind of trading sideways. Bounced off the 34. Now you need to see it break through this, the top of this wedge. Ooh, I thought I was almost done. And there, the Russell needs to open positive tomorrow. Carnival, nothing. Uh, right now, it wouldn't be long or short. There's no direction. I can't get the uh, E-mini or the uh, uh, E-minis up here. I can. I just haven't figured it out. Uh, and CGG Sugar has pulled back. Now you did a doji. Or you're, you did a doji right smack dab on the T-line. Makes it very simple. It has to open positive to stay long. Canadian Pacific, not very exciting. Next likely target is back up to the uh, 200. 3D, that was a bearish signal. Your doji gap down, I'd be ready to go short. It kind of broke everything uh, in that direction. JP Morgan, nothing there. You're still stuck sideways. Spar. One of the trunking companies did the breakout. So look for a 45 degree off of here. Uh, kind of your bobble breakout, J-hook pattern, best friend signal. You can buy this one on positive trading. Um, and I don't know whether the SPX comes up over here. It doesn't. I don't know why SPX doesn't come up what the spy does. SE, there's kind of a hanging man signal. So if it opens lower, that means they're trading it lower. It needs to open and start trading positive. If you're looking for ever source energy, you stay short. Okay, it kept you way past your bedtime. We'll see everybody bright and early in the chat rooms tomorrow. We'll see you then.